A while ago, we were looking at energy conservation equations, and we found that in order to get away from a planet, you had to have a certain velocity. I guess it has to point in the right direction also. But if you have the escape velocity, then you'd have sufficient kinetic energy to escape the gravitational potential energy of this uh, massive object right here. And if you can escape that massive object, we define that velocity as escape velocity. And that math is really easy, but I'm just going to write down the result right here. The escape velocity was the root of 2 times the gravitational constant of the universe times the mass of the massive object right there. And then we had to divide it by the radius of the massive object. So I'll label that in pink so we don't mess up our massive object thing. That radius right there is aura. And <clears throat> the interesting thing is as we combine special relativity and general relativity, we find that there is this ultimate speed limit in the universe. So what if you had an object where the escape velocity was the speed of light? That would be 2 gm divided by the radius. What would this object be? Something that the very fastest things in the universe couldn't get out of. In fact, something, if it's, the radius is exactly what solves this equation right here, something that light itself can't escape from. So let's solve this for r and see if we can make any sense of that. c is going to, well, let's see, c squared times r is 2 times g times m. I'm doing a little bit of algebra on the fly right here, and I'm about to tell you that the radius is going to be 2 times g times the mass of this dangerously massive object divided by the speed of light squared. So this is going to make this radius fantastically small. 2, I don't really care about 2's, g is 10 to the negative 11th or so, and the speed of light is 10 to the 8th, and that's in the denominator and it's squared. Ding! We have ourselves a very small radius unless this mass is incredibly big. So for typical things, the distance at which, whoa, the distance at which light would not be able to escape. Any distance closer than this distance right here, light can't get out of it, is incredibly small. But if you've got an enormous mass all at a single place, like this could happen if you like, let's say you have this star, and the star is being held up by uh, Pauli's exclusion principle and electronic pressure, and then what if the star stops burning and it stops being this electronic pressure that's separating everything? The gravitational force might cause it to collapse a little bit more, and you might get something called a neutron star. So this is a regular star, and then we could make some dots over here, and we could get a neutron star. And the neutron star is incredibly more dense. In fact, it has the density of an atomic nucleus compared to the density of a typical atom. And so a teaspoonful of this, this is a neutron star here, a teaspoonful of this sucker right here has the mass of all the cars on planet Earth. Whoa. Go read about neutron stars. Watch somebody else's video. I'm not going to go too much in detail on neutron stars. But what if the degeneracy pressure of the neutrons is not even enough to cause this sucker from collapsing. There's nothing else to prevent it from being all the mass collapsing to a single point, and it's going to be a heck of a lot smaller than that dot right there. But my point is all the mass would be at one point, which has this distinct problem of ripping space and time itself. We'll call that sucker a black hole. Why? Because light can't get out of it. Its escape velocity is greater than the speed of light because there's so little gravitational potential energy right there. If you get to right here, and this is what we're going to call the event horizon, if you get to this location right here, there are a lot of problems with you. Here's the black hole right here. This is the event horizon of the black hole, and a lot of people call that the radius of the black hole, but the mass itself is concentrated possibly at a single point right here. This guy is inside the boundary of the black hole, and we have no idea what happens in there. We've got all kinds of problems with the black hole. Like, if you get up to the edge of the black hole, the gravitational field is so strong that an outside Side observer over here is thinking that you have stopped moving entirely. While at the same time, if you had any potential energy up here, the kinetic energy that you have right there is going to make your velocity the speed of light. So you're moving at the speed of light, and an outside observer here thinks that you're stopped because things that are moving at the speed of light 
don't appear to experience time to an outside observer. So that's kind of weird. You're stopped right here, yet you're going at the speed of light this direction. And everything that accumulated on the black hole is just sitting there. This isn't really the case for black holes because they're always spinning and they've got this accretion disk of really hot goo that's swimming around it. And sometimes black holes are like sucking on neighbor stars. Here's this black hole over, sorry, this is a regular star over here. And this black hole is spinning around like that and it's like, and it's eating off of its other black, no, other star over here and it, it's getting more and more goo and this is really, really hot. But inside of this event horizon right here, there is an enormous question mark. All the laws of physics as we understand them break down. You've got something that's very small and incredibly massive. You need to combine general relativity and special relativity and quantum mechanics and dang it, good luck. That's gonna be a mess. But my point is, the radius of a black hole can be defined by the escape velocity equal to the speed of light. And things that are going as fast as the speed of light can get out from this location right here, but from right here inside the event horizon, they can't get out. They also call it the Schwarzschild radius to honor Schwarzschild who did a bunch of cool black hole research. Goodbye.